Up until a few weeks ago, the main bikes you would have seen here on my channel were the Trek Fuel X8 and the Trek Marlin 7. But within the last few weeks, you may have started to notice this bike, the Trek Marlin 6. With the weather not cooperating this week, I thought there would be no better time than the present to dive a little deeper into this bike. Before we start, I would like to say that this will not be like the other bike checks on YouTube. I'm not going to obsess over every little detail with the bike, but rather give you my thoughts and have a look at some reviews. With looking at the reviews, I should hopefully be able to cover any areas of the bike you're wondering about, and if I miss anything, feel free to leave a comment with your question. I am also going to show you how Trek is improving the bike with each new model by comparing my 2017 Marlin 6 to the new 2020 model. With all that said, I will give you a little rundown of the bike so that you have a basic understanding of it. Having a look on Trek's website, the main sellers are rack mounts, suspension lockout, rear kickstand mount, and internal cable routing. Now, I'm going to assume that you really don't care about a kickstand in a rack, and rightfully so. But the Trek Marlin 6 does have 100mm of travel, 29 inch reels, some really good Tektro brakes, I don't know how you say that, and a 2x8 drivetrain. I could go into more detail on the parts, but I think I've covered the main points. And most beginners do not know a lot about parts. Hey, I'm at almost 3 years of riding and I know little to nothing about the bike parts. Anyway, now I will tell you my thoughts and after we will compare them to some reviews that I have found. I rode the Trek Marlin 6 a few years ago on a variety of different trails. Mostly tech, but there was some flow. Now, being 100% honest, on some of the tech trails it got pretty rough. But I do live in an area that is well known for having rough tech trails, British Columbia. Now, not to toot my own horn, but I would say most beginners would not be riding trails that are this rough. The flow trails on the other hand were pretty good on this bike. If it was between my fuel and Marlin, I would choose a fuel, but I would still have a great time on the Marlin 6. Overall this is a great bike to learn on, but it does have its limits as all beginner bikes do. Coming down to the good old, would you recommend this bike question? I would say yes with no hesitation. Now it is time to have a look at some of the reviews that people have wrote about this bike. Personally, I've never seen a video where someone looked at reviews in a bike check video, so this would be a good time to try it. First up, we will have a look at their reviews on Trek's website. I will pick a good review and a bad review to look at in detail. Here is a 5 star one I found on their website. I'm very impressed by the quality and durability of the bike. I'm 6'5", 250 pounds and this bike works hard and does skip a beat. Both on the road and on a trail, it does the job getting from point A to B. Trek really lives up to their name and I will always be a fan. Thanks Trek. This fellow who wrote this review might have meant doesn't miss a beat, but I would agree with this review 100%. You can rip around on gravel roads on this bike with a very small amount of effort and it's also great on the trails. This is a very simple review, but it speaks to what I've been saying throughout this video. On the other hand, here we have a 2 star review. This was my first trek and proved to be a disappointment. Heavy, cheap components really made for flat terrain and paved roads. I quickly moved on to a super fly and never looked back. My advice is that if you're looking for a mountain bike, you should skip this model and look into an Excalibur or a Superfly. I will not lie, this review does speak some truth. For a sub thousand dollar bike, the parts will be a little on the heavy side. But personally, I think this review is a little harsh. Maybe the reviewer was hungry, who knows. With that said, I know this bike can handle riding up steep hills and back down. Take the 2 and the 5 and turn them into a 4 would be my opinion. You and I both know there are sub websites out there that only allow for good reviews to be posted, but I'm pretty confident Trek does not do that based on the fact that they do include bad reviews. Having a look at my 2017 model, there are a few complaints that I have. When I went to look at the 2020 updated bike, I was happy to see that Trek has fixed some of the problems I had noticed. The grips, front gears, cable routing, and the fork were the main issues I had with this bike. For the grips, the new bike now comes with lock-ons and they are much better than the pull-ons that I have. The shape of the grip is also much better because they got rid of this extra bow that the 2017 grips have. The cable routing drove me crazy because it was taking off my paint. And just like anyone would, I checked out some YouTube videos which led me to adding these velcro squares. The squares do not look the best, but they are a lot better than the scratches. Having a look at the front gears, they have improved since 2017 by going from a 3 to a 2, but it would be nice to see a 1x. As technology increases, 
Within the next three years, I would be willing to bet that this bike comes with a one buy. While on the website, I noticed that somebody asked if you can convert the Marlin 6 to a one buy, and you can. But as I have said before, I do not think there is a problem with beginners having more gears to allow for more fitness to be gained. For my final complaint, I don't really know if the fork has improved because I have not rode it. I think it's pretty good that the bike is improving each year and I'm curious to see what it looks like in a few years. Alright, there you have it, my new format bike review on the Trek Marlin 6. I would like to hear your feedback on whether you like this video or not. Before I sign off, I will give you my final thoughts. The Trek Marlin 6 is a very good bike for beginners that will introduce you to the world of mountain biking. The bike is not perfect, but it's pretty good for the price. If you like this video, consider subscribing so we can grow to 1000 subscribers by September. If you want to learn more about the Trek Marlin 7, head on over to my website, jakesbiking.com for some cool detail on the bike along with some other cool mountain bike stuff. Next week I should have some better weather so we'll be back to my regular videos. And speaking of videos, there is a new POV video on the Jake's bike riding playlist. For those of you that are still here, thanks for watching and I will see you on the same day at the same time next week.